So this is the very classic activity of a series lab where we're going to test six metals with acid and water. The first test we're going to use acid, hydrochloric acid, which is going to dissociate into free protons. And we're going to see how well the metal can give its electrons to the H pluses, the protons. As you can see in the half reactions, two electrons are going to be passed from the metal to the protons to make free elemental hydrogen gas. We're looking for uh, observations to make here as I add the hydrochloric acid and we're looking for bubbles as we can see that the reduction of the H pluses or the protons from the acid uh, would make hydrogen gas. So the, we're looking to see basically which metal is the best at oxidizing. Which one is best at giving its electrons to the protons. As you can see the magnesium very very reactive as the zinc and iron don't seem as much and the copper as we probably would expect is not very good at oxidizing and zinc as we add some hydrochloric acid you can see some vigorous bubbles here so the, H, the protons in the solution is being reduced by the metal who's giving it electrons and now we can see calcium with the hydrochloric acid um, the most vigorous of all Okay, so you can see that probably calcium is the most spontaneous. It's, it's the best um, at losing electrons or passing its electrons to the protons. Okay, although we can't fall in love with the rate of reaction here. Rates of reaction aren't always going to mesh with uh, spontaneity. Spontaneity of the pathway for reactions to go. In any case, we can see that the magnesium seems like it's, it's done. It's, it's uh, reached completion. The, the magnesium was so reactive that the metal that I had in there has completely turned into magnesium plus two aqueous ions. So you don't see a reaction anymore. So don't think the magnesium is not as reactive as the zinc. The magnesium has reached completion. So we're gonna look uh, up close and personal at these um, uh, to see if the ones that aren't as reactive have some bubbles. So here comes some copper into view. And um, if we look up close, I'm gonna change the zoom, here we go we can see not much going on, if anything. I don't see any visible signs of a reaction going on. Here comes iron. Although we didn't see bubbles from afar, up close and personal, we can see that there's tiny little bubbles on the iron wire. So there is some uh, oxidation, or in this case, reduction of the H pluses. So on the wire, you see those little tiny hydrogen bubbles. So there is some oxidation or passing of electrons from the metal to the H pluses, as we can see from the gas bubbles, not very vigorous. And then tin, as I come into view here, hard to see much going on here. Very hard to see. Okay, so we're just using our observations, in this case looking for bubbles, to help us identify whether or not um, the reaction does go forward, is spontaneous, and how well the metal loses its electrons to the H pluses. Okay, we can also call it a uh, which one's the best reducing agent, which one's going to help the H pluses reduce the most. So our second test here is going to be with water. And it's a very similar reaction, and we're going to add a phenolphthalein to that to see how the water reacts with the metal. Now as we look at the half reactions coming up, we can see that the water is going to react with the metal to make a hydroxide, a base, and we can actually measure the amount of base being made with the chemical indicator phenolphthalein. So same really half reactions, we're basically reducing the H+, whether it comes from the water or it comes from an H plus of an acid, and the protons in the solution uh, become reduced into hydrogen gas. So we're looking here for bubbles, uh, visible uh, identification that a gas has been made, and we're looking for the presence of a pink compound as phenolphthalein changes its shape in the presence of a base solution so that it can absorb wavelengths of light in the pink or red um, or at least it, it can make the red color from the other wavelengths of light it absorbs. In any case, that being said, we're going to pour this water, which has phenolphthalein, into the solutions. Uh, same metals now. We're doing, uh, again, the half reactions are essentially the same because we're trying to reduce the proton from the water. 
it will not be as vigorous because, as you know, there's just not a, there's not as much free protons in water. Water is not a very good electrolyte, so the reaction is not going to be as vigorous. And of course, what's happening is the metal is trying to give an electron to the hydrogen of water, which isn't essentially a proton. So well, it's being held by the water a little bit. So you're not going to see as vigorous a reaction. But you should see, as we do see, the calcium is going very, very quickly. The calcium looks to be, from observation, the best at getting oxidized. And if you look in the middle, the magnesium, you do see, you don't see many bubbles from this vantage point, but you do see that pink color emanating from the magnesium strips. And that's about all the observations you can see at this vantage point. I'm going to pick up these test tubes uh, and bring them closer to you to you to see if, in fact, um, there is some bubbles and if we can see some some pink color. Again, that tells us the reaction is going forward. There is some oxidation and reduction, and we are making the base as the metal pulls electrons. Uh, I'm sorry, gives its electrons to the hydrogen and water. The H's come off in water, make hydrogen gas the bubbles. Now look, we can see that the magnesium has a pink color to it, so there is some reaction as we suspected. We don't see any other colors anywhere else, so calcium and magnesium look like to be the metals that are reacting the most vigorously, which leads us to believe that the calcium and magnesium are the, most, uh, are the best so far at oxidizing or being the reducing agent, if you want to think that way, um, as we see the evidence of pink. So I'm going to bring some um, test tubes up. Let's look at the zinc, which did react in the acid, so we suspect that there should be some reactivity here and very hard to see any pink going on here. So we're going to let this sit for about a day to see if there's any change. Again, the rate of reaction is not tied to the spontaneity. All right, and then there we can see the magnesium. Clearly, there is some a pink color from the phenolphthalein due to the base being made in this redox reaction. So therefore, magnesium is pretty good at oxidizing. Here comes the iron. Um, tough to see, but you know, I think I see some visible uh, bubbles there, which lead me to believe that hydrogen gas is being made, although I don't see any visible pink yet. And the tin, hard to find, but it, I don't see any visible bubbles for hydrogen gas, which is a product of the redox reaction as well, and no pink. So, what we're going to do here is let these sit for a day and come back and see if, in fact, that changes. Okay? because again it's not the, the the rate of reaction is much slower in water so a day later one day later okay can't help can't, couldn't help myself in any case you can see that clearly the iron magnesium and zinc showed some uh, increased color in the red spectrum there because they created some base notice magnesium okay is the darkest uh, calcium probably would be but some of it might have pushed out the top. So now, a day later, you can see clearly that there is some reactivity. And of course, the zinc, the tin here does not show any bubbles or any color. So tin is really pointing us to believe that there is limited, if no reactivity whatsoever. Hard to see if there is some. All right, that may have to stay for a longer period of time if it is reactive or heat it to increase the rate of reaction. Okay, iron, which we just saw very little, which is some bubbles, but we can clearly see uh, the pink color. And we also see that uh, orangey red color on the bottom, that's indicative of um, iron ions being made as well, building up on the bottom. So clearly iron is reactive, and with the acid tests, you should be able to figure out who is the most, uh, or rank these metals in terms of their reactivity. Magnesium, again, as we talked about, we saw the red color immediately after we, afterwards, and now we see uh, some bubbles still sitting there. That's hydrogen gas and the pink color. Plenty of magnesium oxide being made as this reaction was pretty, pretty vigorous, even in water. Okay. And now as we bring this test tube back, we see another test tube which is hard to see any color. And this would be the um, copper. And the copper looks like there might be a bubble there. I'm not sure. But again, no color, no visible color leading us to believe that no uh, copper oxide was made or no reaction. We may have to heat that one to see. Um, in any case, the zinc, which was 
very reactive in the acid, definitely has some reactivity in the water now. We didn't see that in the previous day, but a day later you can definitely see the presence of zinc hydroxide or the phenolphthalein who's indicating a base was made. And of course the calcium, um, we saw that immediately. Easy to rank this in terms of the most reactive of the metal. So from your observations, including the acid and now the water, please rank your metals as the most reactive to least reactive and you've built yourself an activity series. If we did net potentials for these half reactions, they should support your observations. Again, the copper and uh, tin we may have to heat to see if there's any visible reaction.